Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're going to focus in and zoom in a little bit more in depth on the games that the narcissist play. The narcissist has an inflated sense of self, a heightened sense of superiority, and coupled with a uh, lack of empathy, which means a lack of the ability to understand, relate to the feelings, needs, wishes, desires, and really a lot of the opinions of others. And this superior heightened sense of self tends to give them a sense of grandiosity, a sense that they should only um, associate with people of high status, that they are above others, that they don't need to give others uh, a, a, a bit of time or a bit of consideration. It is really, you know, a selfishness, but, you know, not just uh, healthy narcissistic needs, which are the need to feel validated, accepted, loved, um, and, you know, responded to, but it's a pathology. It becomes a character disorder when it really becomes all about them, all about responding to their needs, hearing their side of the story, understanding what their opinions are, understanding and validating what their talents are, their position in business, their position in life, what they've experienced, what they've, who they've traveled with, where they've traveled. Um, the games that they play are all about feeding into and promulgating or basically, uh, you know, fanning their ego. And the ego really is all about uh, possessiveness and really the, the I am. And it's not just about having a good sense of self. It's about being better than. And it's about really, through the lack of empathy, we see an exploitation or an, an annihilation of really the importance of others in other human beings, oftentimes in general. Um, so it's not that these people don't need others. They need others just to support them. They, they, they need others to help them get to where they need to be. So they don't have love relationships where it's a communication back and forth, you know, per, per equals. The games that they play are, are those which tend to keep them at this, you know, heightened sense of self, self-importance. So they do this through the games of uh, very sardonic or sarcastic humor, uh, where they might put others down, um, even as part of their humor. Uh, part, you know, and it's not, you know, an embracing of the differences of others and understanding the richness and, and really understanding that it takes all different shape, shapes, sizes, uh, religions, you know, viewpoints, um, talents to make the world go round. They don't have an appreciation of that. It is about, um, you know, the very sarcastic humor that they might have uh, that really, in essence, put others down. It's making fun of others and others' health conditions. Uh, the games that they play in terms of, you know, you taking care of them and, and feeling like if you can just scratch their back a little bit longer, if you can massage them and then their ego, massage their ego, if you can be, be there to bolster them up, be their support, be their fan, uh, make their meals, uh, decide where, um, you know, where, how things are going to go for them, to get everything just right for them, to cater to them, to help basically support all their very perfectionist needs. So that you run around, um, is in essence, you know, sometimes like a, a chicken with their head cut off in order to be there to support them. It's not about having your vision and what you want for your life. And I remember my grandmother, you know, who once told me, you know, life is all about having wants. And, um, you know, she shared this with my father and he had remembered that also and that, you know, uh, life is all about wanting things. Well, you know, you want things, but you want things, you know, really together with, with somebody. Um, generally, you know, if you just want things by yourself, it's in essence like living in a vacuum. So, you know, basically you're going to get stuck and, you know, you're going to get hoovered in very much, you know, like a vacuum into this person's needs. It's almost like I've heard it described by other viewers as basically standing on the abyss of um, unending neediness. So it's not even like the things that they want, it's things that they need. They need others. They have an insatiable need to control and have power over others. So as you can imagine, it's like being in a relationship with a spouse or a family member who's like an employer. 
you literally have to, um, you know, like almost you feel like you clock in and clock out with them. <laughs> that you really, you don't feel a sense of freedom with them. You don't feel a sense of okayness. You don't feel that you can be authentic and relaxed with them. Because you always have to be um, kind of, you know, uh, serving the facade, feeding their ego. Rather than feeding your faith, feeding your own destiny, feeding your own st sense of safety and security. And God forbid you should have a health issue and be quote unquote less than perfect because you have a health issue. You know, you've, you've come up with a, a digestive issue or a cancer or some sort of heart issue. You know, these people are not going to be the ones to drive you to the doctor. They're not going to be there with, uh, you know, a, um, a compassionate ear. They're not going to be there with a shoulder to cry on. They're not, you know, they're just going to be on to their next gig. They're going to be on to their next supply. They're, they're going to be, you know, relatively unempathic. They are going to have, you know, they're, they're going to have more empathy for their, their pets than they are going to for you. Um, and they, they know this. They know that they have a closer connection, something like with a dog than they do with people because the dog will always be there for them. You know, they're, um, they're, uh, money, you know, that they tend to hoard will always be very for, there for them and they'll make sure that they have plenty of it and that they're very tight-fisted in terms of giving it away um, or, you know, taking care of others. So, we, you know, when we talk about, um, we often hear about the, uh, the covert narcissist spouse who's very tight-fisted. You know, um, even though their wife might deserve roses, she's getting carnations. You know, even though, you know, she's kept the house impeccable, uh, put dinner on the table, raised the kids, you know, there's always something that she didn't quite do. You know, driving, uh, you know, a lesser than she deserves car or, you know, uh, gifts that really don't fit her personality. So you see this shortcoming in the narcissist where they don't really reflect the needs of others. So it's this game of, you know, um, them always trying to uh, show off or show up their spouse through, you know, other, uh, they, they might just, you know, put on conference calls or these are my work buddies and you kind of feel like, you know, you're less than these other contacts. Um, and they, they, they tend to almost kind of keep you in the dark or feeling less than because you're not involved in these sort of inner circles and they might not even introduce you to these people because they're trying to keep you feeling less than um, and they only want to hang around or be associated with people of certain status. So it's, um, and even though they might use you for, uh, they, they might use people for sex, they might use people for companionship, a quick lunch date. It's more for you to see how good they're doing rather than to them really care about you. They really don't have an interest in you. They don't really have an interest in others really at all, uh, which is the very shocking thing. So that is the game. It is you're just a pawn to help move them ahead. If they can jump over you, you know, they can maneuver you here so they can advance them in their game, then they're basically going to keep you around to supply, which is very sad. Yes, it is. It is a very sad state of affairs and a very sad state to think that people can be like that. And of course, there's, you know, there's going to be you know, a, a little bit of give and take in all relationships, you know, um, but it's, you know, one hand knows what the other hand is doing in, in successful relationships. You know, one is there to be a, a, a you know, a, a position of support and strength and, you know, and, uh, you know, and likewise. So, you know, it's going to generally go both ways and there's going to be a fluid, a fluidity to the relationship, but in the narcissistic relationship, they're always going to have to keep you shut down, keep you, sh you know, keep one, uh, you know, shuttered out, um, and just to keep them and their, their game always above. And they'll oftentimes, especially in the overt narcissist, they'll be very vocal about their insults or they'll be quick to, you know, call, uh, you know, flies on other people. And of course they'll be very controlling, especially when they tend to talk about other people whom they don't even know and, you know, uh, you know, pointing fingers at them and this and that and be highly opinionated to give them an inflated se sense of self. So you're playing their game when you continue to promulgate their ego, when you continue to keep them in that facade 
and and be and you know be disingenuous with them and feel like you have to uh, just go along with their game, go along with their tactics, go along with their illusion. Um, you don't need to do that. It's okay to be an authentic self. It's okay to have your own values. It's okay to say no, um, and and not just be that sort of supply. It's really important to put your foot down, acknowledge that, and live that, and definitely communicate that to the narcissist so they know you're no longer just uh, a pawn in their uh, basically set of pieces that they move around in order just to advance their game and to keep you in a, a state of uh, feeling like of non-being or non-importance. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help you. Please share. Please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.